I was recently searching on Amazon for a brand new floodlight to put in my yard and I wanted to get the most powerful one under 10 euros. I ended up locating this one. It's a 20 watt LED floodlight and it has a motion sensor. However, I don't need the motion sensor, so I will be disabling it in this video. The floodlight I have here is a 20 watt one manufactured by BTEC. It's available in 10, 20, 30 and 50 watt. It has luminosity detection, so you can turn it on only if it's dusk, for example. You can set the time that it stays on, and you can set the sensitivity at which it turns on. The motion sensor in this floodlight is non-detachable, so I'll have to open it up so I can rewire it and use it with my wall switch and turn it on or off when I want, and not based on motion. To do that, you have to remove at least four screws. I count there will be, there will be more in, on the inside. Let's see. Still one. There we go. Step the glass aside. And here we have it. You might not be able to see it, but I can. I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. 12 sets of LEDs in series, 2 LEDs in parallel per series. Let's try and open it up. Remove the diffuser, if I can call it that. And it's off. Many Chinese floodlights have the same wiring to the motion sensor. It's one red wire, one brown wire and one blue wire. I'll show you uh, in a piece of paper how this is wired, how you can wire a simple floodlight and how you can modify this one so you can use a wall switch to turn it on or off. Inside our floodlight, however, we have a line, a neutral. The line goes to the motion detector the neutral goes to the motion detector and to the LED power supply and out of the motion detector comes a line out that connects to the power supply and the power supply then powers the LED floodlight. We'll be removing the motion detector, jumping from here to here and cutting this connection. This way we'll bypass the motion detector and connect line and neutral directly to the LED power supply. If you want to do the opposite, on the other hand, you can install the motion detector by tapping into the existing wiring. You cut the wire that goes from live in to the power supply for the LEDs and you attach it to brown and red wires respectively. The blue wire is connected to neutral from the power supply and the mains. We have a few wires inside the floodlight. We have the neutral that comes from the socket, connects directly to the neutral in the power supply and to the motion detector. We have the earth that connects the earth to the floodlight chassis. We have the live that connects directly to the motion detector and from the motion detector comes this red which is a switched live that connects to the live on the power supply. We have to remove the power supply so we can attach the cable straight from mains to the, to the input and this way we can use it with a simple wall switch and bypass the motion detector. In my case I'll leave the motion detector in place because as you can see there's a hole that I wouldn't like to fill if I could avoid it. So the motion detector will be here, there will be no water ingress and I will not have to worry about sealing this hole back up. Here we have the power supply. I can see already that some potting residue, however this is soft so I'll be able to remove this 
and only then I will be able to remove the power supply. It should be fairly easy though. Yes, very easy. Uh, this is mainly to secure it inside this plastic housing, but I don't think we'll have a problem if we just put it in there. It's, it's a pretty snug fit. I don't foresee any problems. It's time to get the soldering iron. I'll add some leaded solder because this one's probably lead free and it sucks. Now let's remove the blue wire, the neutral. There we go. And the red one. And there we go. I'll be using a solder sucker. Not the best, but does the job. Hit the joint and suck it. Now it's time to connect the brown live wire directly to the power supply. I'll start by removing the heat shrink around it. Oh, well, not very tight, I guess. Let's remove the connection. There we go. And now, or a bit later, we can separate the connections, the wires we are using from the wires that we'll, we will not be using. I'll add some insulating tape afterwards, but for now, let's try and fit the live onto the PCB, which we did. And let's solder it in place. good. Let's just hit this joint. And I think we're done. Let's just check. These cables seem to be made of out of silicon, so they're a bit better resisting to heat than PVC cables. Yep, we're done. We never know the day of tomorrow, so instead of removing the motion detector, also because it will leave a big hole that will let water get in, I'll just use some duct tape, electrical tape, should I say, and put it around the motion detector the motion detector cables should i say now they don't carry any current they have no voltage but you'll still want to use a bit of electrical tape to isolate it isolate them from any other connections an important test that we should make is for a short circuit. I'm pretty confident about my job, but we still should probe the live and the neutral. There may be a bit of flux over the solder joints, but we'll try to remove it so we can establish a good connection. 
my probes are working. And we have no short circuit between live and neutral. Let's see the resistance. I should probably, probably get better probes. Probably. And there we go. 4.5 mega ohms. On one direction. And 40 mega ohms on the other direction. We're good. So, what's next? Let's put the power supply inside the module, the, the small plastic, the small plastic housing. Let's screw it in place, assuming I can find the screws. And not let them fall. There goes one. And there goes the other one. It is a snug fit, however the cables are pushing the board, the power supply board out, out of the plastic housing. Yeah, it's not coming out of here. And since this is going to be mounted on the wall, I doubt that it's gonna move by itself. One thing I forgot to say is that we should test for a continuity between neutral and the earth or the chassis. And we have no continuity in either direction. Now let's test for continuity between live and the chassis and again we have no continuity between any of these connections so it's ready to assemble let's just give it a, a, sm a quick test I'll be putting a small piece of cloth over it so I don't flood the camera but you'll still be able to see if it's turned on or off and let's turn it on yes it's turned on what's left is to reassemble this we have we have already uh, installed the screws that hold the power supply in place the power supply is in place don't worry i left the capacitors discharged before i touched the power supply We need to install the reflector. Remove any dust that may have collected. Perfect. Put the glass over it. Flip it around. And tighten all four screws. 
There goes one. Two. Three. And four. I didn't over tighten these screws in, on purpose. I wanted to get all four in the respective orders, in the respective holes before I tightened them. This way I'll ensure that I guess that I get the best fit. Perfect. So that's pretty much it. You can see the flow light is working. It's working independently of the time of the day, of the luminosity of the day and motion detection. I can now put it on my garden and use it whenever I want just by flipping a switch. I apologize in advance if any part of this tutorial or guide or whatever you want to call it is not very well understandable. Uh, English is not my main language and I'm trying to do my best. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful. Be careful around mains wiring. Don't get zapped. Don't die. And good luck in your future projects.